in this video i am going to talk about what are the types of different types of data science projects that you can you can do in the retail industry the first one i am going to talk about is the project on repeat purchase it's, it's very popular in the retail industry where uh, people do research on the customer data to find out uh, who could be a potential uh, loyal customer okay so what are the chances that a particular customer is going to come back again uh, to repurchase okay so it's basically a prediction problem it's a prediction problem where you are trying to find out the probability that a given customer who is, who is already a customer by the way he has purchased something from from your company but it is um, in your database so the data uh, regarding his purchase behavior is already there in your database you are trying to use that data to find out uh, whether there are chances that he is going to come back again okay so there you use uh, this uh, probability models whether it's uh, logistic regression whether it's a decision tree uh, uh, whether it's a neural network and so on so uh, you can find out a probability that you know ranges from 0 and 1 and wherever you see there is you know higher probability for repurchases you uh, provide them some kind of a promotional offers so that they will be um, you know more motivated to come back okay so you will, you will ensure that the conversion rate is higher in that case uh, it's not done on new customers it's it's done on on existing customers okay it's because it's it's more about repurchase not about new purchase okay so for new purchase uh, that is it's, it's an open problem uh, uh, i would argue because for new purchase there isn't any data so you can't do much about it you'll have to take an alternative approach but repeat purchase you already have data in your, in your database so you can do a lot of um, research on that cross selling is another type of uh, retail modeling that that people use it's also heavily used in the marketing um, marketing of any product or services so it's basically selling an additional product uh, to an existing customer and the uh, product did not be the same product okay it's like you are on the amazon website and you, you have just bought a laptop okay so what amazon will do is that amazon will simply recommend you or simply give you an offer on the laptop bag so laptop bag is related to laptop and just that you bought a laptop from amazon amazon believes that you'll also need a laptop bag so that's how it, it just gave 20 percent offer um, or discount on laptop bag and you know you probably will want to uh, take that offer right so that's about cross selling okay the products should be related and they should be bought at the same time okay so that's how it is different from repeat purchase where you know um, it's done at a different point in time okay the third one could be a personalized recommendation or what people call recommendation engine it also can be applied or used uh, in the retail industry where you have tons of data both from the online purchase and offline purchase so you have the customer behavioral data the purchase behavior data of customers both from online uh, from the online stores and from the offline stores and then you can use that data to uh, sort of recommend product and services to your customers okay so that's what uh, the e-commerce uh, giants like Amazon, e eBay, or Alibaba are doing. So what they're doing is basically they're trying to uh, analyze the data that you are producing just by browsing through their websites or apps. And then based on what you want, they are uh, basically recommending you different product and services that has higher chance of conversion because that's, a, that's what is going to benefit them, right? when when you you actually buy something from them so that's you know, people call it as conversion rate right pricing is one area where you can use a data analytics uh, for product pricing in the, in the retail industry so you have demand data so how much demand is there for a given product or a given category of product you also have competitors price data that's mostly available nowadays on many um, you know market resource companies they provide it uh, also, it's available in in different uh, you know forums where you know people disclose the you know prices of the products. So use uh, the demand data that you have for a given product or a given set of products or segment of product 
and then use the competitor's price and use use optimization algorithms to to come up with the best price of your product that would make sure that you you end up uh, making the most profit so the idea here is to maximize profit given uh, the uh, demand for a given product um, the competitor's price and different other uh, constraints like the minimum price of a product um, the inventory that's available to with you and, and so on you can also extend that project to real-time pricing and this is very popular in the online retail market where um, the pricing will change based on the demand and the time and and uh, many other factors will will be taken into account while coming up with the uh, uh, real time pricing one a popular example is how airline price um, tickets right that's more real time right that based on your travel rate based on how the demand is and so on Loyalty analysis is one uh, important area where retail industry uh, focus the research on. So in loyalty, uh, what you do is that you use the data to find out factors or drivers, um, drivers of loyalty. Okay. So what are the factors responsible for customers to be loyal to a given company or a given product? Okay. So Walmart or Target. Such retail companies will try to uh, find out what are the factors that are responsible for a customer to come back to the same company. Right? Remember the first project that we talked about that was in repurchase. That was more of a prediction problem, right? But this is not a prediction problem. This is not where you are trying to find out the probability that somebody will come back to the same company or will buy the same product. It is about um, knowing the uh, the reasons or the factors. So it's more about uh, a st drawing statistical uh, statistical inference rather than uh, prediction. Okay. So you can do that with many number of companies. You can do that in retail in uh, in, in, in in automobile car industry, in in uh, traditional retail industry. You can do that even even uh, for online retail industry. So mind it, you know, it's it's basically knowing the statistical inference. So you have, let's say, some factor representing uh, repurchase, uh, and then you have bunch of factors, uh, x factors, okay, um, that are responsible for repurchase. So you are trying to know the betas, right? So which ones, which for which x factors, the betas or the coefficients are significant and uh, by what units okay you like to know what is the strongest beta whether it's beta 2 or beta 3 or beta 1 that means you're trying to basically know that which factor is the strongest or the most important factor for loyalty and that's where you will focus on your policy on right the company will uh, give a lot of emphasis on that particular factor it could be discounts Right. It could be, you know, some online facility that it's giving the loyalty program that, you know, it is having many retail company have their own loyalty program. So if that is what is impacting repurchase the most, if you are able to find that out from the loyalty model, then the company will um, invest more on it. OK, so it's basically trying to get insight rather than doing a prediction. OK, that's where the difference is. Right. Campaign analysis. This is another uh, statistical inference uh, modeling exercise that you can do. So you can analyze data collected from marketing campaigns. Uh, for many retail companies, uh, when when a new product is 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 launched, uh, it's a new product is there in the retail store. This company they advertise that in in different uh, forums, okay, in different through different channels, whether it's TV, whether it's social media, whether it's so it, they basically do a lot of uh, campaigns nowadays social media campaign is a very famous thing but um, back in those days when you know there were no social media sites offline marketing campaign used to be very popular it's still popular but online uh, is now more effective so people are doing more on online camp um, marketing campaign so you will collect a lot of data about what people are liking how many clicks are there on on the campaign uh, what's the reaction uh, from the audience, target audience? Uh, how many comments? What types of comments are there? So you will do, 
you will get a lot of data right so you analyze that data okay you can use a lot of techniques whether it's regression techniques whether it's nlp or you know conversation if somebody is blogging about it somebody is tweeting about it you can you know collect all the tweets and the blogs and the you know comments and and so on and you can analyze that so there you will be using the natural language processing uh, on the other hand if it is more of a you know traditional um, you know uh, a data that that you can put it in x1 y form then you can do regression analysis to find out uh, the outcome of campaign analysis so that's done both on online and offline you can also uh, extend that to surveys okay uh, survey is is simply uh, doing survey about different market uh, different products and services it's, if a retail company is, is providing products and services it can do surveys about what people are liking and what they're not liking about uh, a given product or service. So survey data uh, can also be used uh, for such analysis. Market basket analysis is a very popular uh, you know, data science technique uh, used in the retail industry. Um, those who are already familiar with marketing and, and retail industry, they must already be knowing what market basket analysis is. It's a very simple way of analyzing how products are you know, related to each other and that's, that helps actually um, um, ensuring that you you keep the products in a pro in such a way that you maximize uh, the sales okay so it's basically trying to find out the frequency okay so it is basically if somebody is buying milk uh, he is most likely to buy uh, eggs uh, and bread okay because all three are uh, major components of um, of a breakfast right so somebody going in for um, bread is likely to buy egg and milk as well so it's a very simple uh, way of analyzing uh, which you know combination of products are having high frequency and that's how you uh, you, you basically plan the way you uh, keep products or you you provide recommendation and so on so that that's another way you don't use a lot of sophisticated um, statistical regression algorithms here uh, this is more about um, sorting and, and finding frequencies and so on. A-B testing is another statistical inference testing people use in many industry, not just in retail industry. It's very popular in the e-commerce industry when they're coming up with a new feature on their website or on their app. Or uh, this is also very important in many product companies where you know their change uh, company is changing uh, some feature on 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 the product. So you will never get to know um, beforehand as to whether people will like it or not. So if you do not know and you spend a lot of money on, on the product or service, then you will end up, you might end up losing a lot of that money. So it's best uh, to uh, analyze um, whether people will like this or not. So this is about testing product and services where you will uh, do sort of a campaign you will you will to get gather data and then use hypothesis testing to find out whether people actually uh, like it or not okay one example could be whether uh, you know uh, people like email marketing or they want phone marketing so you took the sample data and conducted both email marketing and phone marketing and and you analyze that data to come up with the conclusion uh, whether uh, customers most customers like email marketing or, or phone marketing or they are being um, you know, contacted through email or phone okay CTR rate uh, prediction this is again a prediction problem uh, where uh, you know this is very uh, relevant or to, to online market like Amazon where most of their customers come from uh, you know different blogs and different different news sites and so on so um, so Amazon, what it does is it it advertises it, its uh, you know different uh, products that's there on on its website on different websites, on blogs, news sites, um, YouTube videos, um, social media pages, and so on. So what are the chances that somebody will click uh, on on the given uh, banner of advertisement? So if if it does click, if somebody will click on it, what is what are the chances of he uh, purchasing uh, something from Amazon. 
So, okay, so that becomes a prediction problem, and you can do that uh, by predicting the click through rate. Uh, so, that data is there on Kaggle, by the way, the very famous data. You can use that data um, just to play around and see how you can build a model to predict uh, the CTR rate. Segmentation analysis is another, uh, you know, um, modeling technique that you can use for statistical inference making uh, for decision making process. So it's basically used uh, to know how many product segments are there in your product ranges and what should be the ideal product segments. So you may have thousands of products, but you cannot have thousands of um, segments. You may have to segment into four to five, okay, a smaller number of segments, okay. That's needed for many reasons, right? You may have, you know, you may want to have, let's say, a manager for one segment. You cannot have thousand managers for each product. You can have four or five managers managing this four or five segments. So what would be, which, how do you, you know, segment this product into different categories? That's uh, something you can, you can get to do using segmentation analysis. You can do that for product segmentation, customer segmentation, market segmentation, and so on. Sometimes it's more of a common sense, um, but many a times you will have to use statistical um, modeling algorithms to do so. So common sense could be, you know, if you are catering to, let's say, uh, India and China, but both of them come in the Asian market. So you can say, okay, one segment is the Asian market, and we will uh, cater to both India, China, um, Singapore, and other uh, countries that fall in the Asian category. Uh, so same thing you can do it for Canada or North America, or you can do that for different European countries, patient geographies. But many times it's not that straightforward. You'll have to use some data to come up with why you should segment, uh, you know, markets in such a way. Why you would segment product in such a way, and so on. So you need that data evidence to showcase that. That's the optimal way of segmenting your product, uh, products or customers or, or markets. So that's uh, segmentation analysis. So these are the, some of the eight to ten, you know, broad categories of data science project that you can try, uh, you know, implementing or doing. If you're a student, you can of course try on your own. If you are already working in the retail industry, you can um, start uh, come out, start doing some uh, proof of concept around these concepts. Take data, take the sample data from your own industry, from your own department, and you can do and, and showcase to your management. If you are uh, not having access to such data, you can you can go to data.gov. There's so many data sets on uh, on retail. You can take that those data sets and play around and and see if you can use uh, you can build models around these data sets to solve problems in the retail industry. Uh, there are some data also available on Kaggle that is. Uh, free for public. Um, UCI ML datasets uh, is also a good resource where you can find uh, retail datasets. Thank you.